Disgraced parenting YouTuber Ruby Frankie hired private investigator to probe angry followers. Angry text messages from strangers, spam emails for plastic surgeries, and then in the middle of the night in 2020, someone covering their face rang the doorbell with a threatening message for the vlogging family of eight. Of course you're going to be angry. That makes so much sense. And they're not anybody's children but mine and Kevin's and we are doing a really good job and we are doing a really good job Ruby and Kevin Frankie who co-hosted the influential YouTube channel eight passengers documenting their strict parenting over their six kids in Utah first came under fire in May 2020 after one of their children Chad said in a video he had been made to sleep on a beanbag chair for seven months for pranking his younger brother into believing they were going to Disney World. My bedroom was taken away for seven months and then you give it back like a couple weeks ago. I don't think our viewers know that. You've been sleeping on a beanbag. I've been sleeping on a beanbag since October. <laughs> and they gave my room back like two weeks ago. Oh, I'll give you the reason why I lost my bedroom. I think so. I think this is the reason. At least this is the reason that's been in my head. It's pretty funny, but now that I look back, I mean, it's pretty depressing. No, we never told our viewers. That I woke Russell up at 2 in the morning and told him that we're going to Disneyland and he <laughs> has to pack. <laughs> and he got up and made his bed all neatly and then packed all his clothes in a suitcase. And then he walked out the door and I'm like, Russell, <laughs> he was like, what? And he's all happy. <laughs> has his sunglasses on. And I was like, we're not going to Disneyland. <laughs> and he started crying and hitting me. And then he went back to bed in tears and then... So that that was that was not the reason you lost your room, but that was well, the other reason because I pointed a BB gun at his face. Pointed a BB gun at his face and hung him on the basketball. <laughs> <laughs> The video angered some of their 2.5 million YouTube subscribers who started a petition amassing 17,000 signatures in support of a child protective services investigation into the alleged maltreatment by the parents who they said had taken away basic necessities. Ruby and her daughter Eve were baking bread in the kitchen when social workers checked on the family that June and they had closed the investigation without substantiating the allegations. But the family's angry followers were not so easily reassured. Kevin called David Corrington, a private private investigator and a retired special agent with the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. I think what really threw it over the edge was this person showing up in the middle of the night ringing the doorbell, Corrington tells People in the latest issue on Newsstands Friday. That starts getting a little more personal and scary with the children being in the house. He said the couple hired him shortly after the incident. Corrington, who says he believed there were several individuals that were targeting the couple, said the family definitely had some frustration that the police department was not doing enough. But many people continued to believe the Frankie children were being mistreated. Over the years, calls to police and Child Protective Services continued against the family. Long before we started YouTube, there were a lot of behavioral and emotional challenges that we were dealing with with our kids and we've been consulting with uh, mental health and emotional health professionals for years and the things that we show and share and the things that many of you are criticizing and calling abusive are actually things that mental health professionals have uh, counseled us Basically, what Child Protective Services told us is we can't do anything until somebody gets hurt, the neighbor tells people. In the previous video, we heard Kevin say that he and Ruby consulted with therapists for their children's behavioral issues. And the situation with Chad's bedroom happened in 2020, so after they had sent him to Anasazi, the wilderness camp. Ruby does a video with Chad where he's talking about how he just spoke with his therapist on the phone, who turns out was Jody Hildebrandt. And she taught me about truth and distortion. Mom probably talks about Jody all the time. But. I've mentioned Jody a few times. She has a podcast called Connections with an X. Anyway. What did, what did you learn? Well, I learned about the three different types of pain. And uh, we can feel pain in ways of our own choices other people's choices and just like random events and it's our way to choose to see things in truth so me deciding that my stomach ache was chad's fault was not seeing things in truth right but i really really want to blame him <laughs> because i just want to be able to eat my desserts again and oreo cookies without stomach aches and so then send me off to another wilderness camp again I, I so in my opinion this whole situation should have been a wake-up call for Kevin Frankie 
We're seeing this therapist and now our viewers are calling CPS on us. Maybe they're right and maybe this treatment is not okay. Then the couple's youngest son, Russell, slipped out a window in a home where he was staying with his mother and younger sister, Eve, at family therapist Jody Hildebrand's home in Ivan's, Utah, and rang the neighbor's doorbell. Too small for his shorts and with sores pussing along his wrists and duct tape around his ankles, the sandy blonde 12-year-old asked the man to call 911. Quote, he says what's happened to him is his fault, end quote. The neighbor, his voice breaking, relayed to the emergency operator. Responding to calls from a concerned neighbor and Sherry, the couple's estranged eldest daughter, the family racked up multiple visits from social workers who did not substantiate any allegation until August. In search warrants, the Santa Clara Ivins Police Department alleges Russell was tied to the ground with ropes and that the women rubbed cayenne, pepper, and honey into his wounds. Russell and Eve were taken to a local hospital, treated for malnourishment, and placed in foster care along with their two teenage sisters, Abby and Julie. Sherry and Chad had already moved out. Now, this is what's so confusing about this situation is that we learned previously that Abby and Julie were at Pam Botcher's house, the president of Connections Foundation, and eventually went with Sherry the day of Ruby's arrest. They didn't really want to go with Sherry, but they ended up going with her. So it's unclear if they stayed with Sherry or if they went into foster care as well. By evening, Ruby and Jody were arrested, each charged with six counts of aggravated felony CA, held without bail at a Washington County Purgatory Correctional Facility. Neither has entered a plea. Kevin was questioned by police, but has not been charged. He had left the family home a year earlier at the direction of Hildebrandt, according to his lawyer, Randy Kester. As far as I know, there has not been another court date set for Ruby and Jody triggered and so if you are triggered and you're upset because of something Kevin and I have done with our children that is actually working really well for us then I would invite you to look at it and ask yourself what what is it that I'm projecting onto this situation because you would be upset and you would be angry if I was your mom doing this to you. Thank you so much for watching. Please do me a favor and like this video, subscribe, and turn on the bell icon to get notifications for when I post.